to my channel, y'all. I am so thankful that you are here again with me watching another video. It means a lot that you allot some time out of your day to sit and watch these and listen to what little old me has to say. So thank you, thank you, thank you for that. And tell all your friends to tune in too, you know? Something that has been on my heart here recently and actually for a while now is what we fill ourselves with. The things that we feed our spirit comes out if we're not careful and I don't think people realize how big of a deal that is. Anybody that knows me knows that I have inspirational stuff all over my room, all over my house. If you um, have been to my house or if you've been to my apartment back when I was at school, I had stuff everywhere. I had inspirational quotes. I had little wall decor with inspirational sayings on it. I had sticky notes. I wrote stuff on all of my mirrors. Like, at home, there's multiple signs on like each part of my dresser all over my door it's like you cannot get away from this inspirational stuff like no matter where you turn there's something that's telling you to be positive okay for me seeing this stuff every day makes me have a better day so if I'm like down and I see one of my signs says share a smile then it's like Lex you need to smile today you know and then I have another one that says live forgive and pray each day and I think that that's important too because it's reminding me to live every day to the fullest it's reminding me to forgive those that have wronged me and if I can't forgive them then I can't how can I expect Christ to forgive me because we mess up daily so we have to be forgiving to others so that we can receive that same forgiveness from him and then lastly pray each day I just did a YouTube video on over the power of prayer and the Bible says to pray without ceasing so those are just that's like a mantra or something that I live by and I think it's really important I love words and I don't know how people like cannot love words I love making people feel good with words and I love when people make me feel good with words and telling me how much I mean to them and just how I brighten their day and stuff like that. And if you're smart enough, you know that words of affirmation is one of my love languages. It's one of my top three, actually. So if you do not know your love languages, then you need to take the test and figure it out because you need to know how you want to be loved, how you like to be loved, and how you can love those around you, your friends, your family, all of that because if you're loving someone the wrong way then they're not going to be receptive to it and nobody wants that you know <laughs> let me tell y'all something the bible is full of affirmations and when i was a little kid i went to private school i actually went to private school for a pretty long time almost all of grade school i was in private school i went to rockwell christian academy which was oddly enough in rowlett but in preschool k3 yes we had a k3 k4 and k5 we had to say our I am's every day. And I am's are just things that are in the Bible. They're affirmations from the Bible. So it's what God says you are. And if you believe those, if you say them to yourself, like I try to recite them daily or at least read over them once a day just so that I don't forget who I am in Christ. My I am's, I actually have them on my door, but I took them off for y'all to see them. So I hope that y'all can see these. I printed them off. There's like 40. 40 I am's. All right. So I have 40. No, it's, I should be this way. Yes. Okay. So I have 40 I am's, and I printed them off again because I have them somewhere from pre-K. But pre-K. Come on. I just graduated college. I don't know where that is. <laughs> so I printed them off again, and then I wrote more uplifting stuff around them. I love colors and I love words, so that is what that is. I'm gonna read you a couple of them. There's 40, I'm not gonna read all 40. That's a lot. If y'all want a copy or you want some I am's to read to yourself, hit me up, email me, call me, text me, and I can send you pictures, email them to you, whatever. And it says, I am a child of God. I am redeemed from the hand of the enemy. I am justified, I am sanctified. I am a new creature in Christ Jesus. I am led by the Spirit of God. We are led by the Spirit of God, but we have to feed our spirit good things so that we can be led by Him. Because if we are not feeding ourselves good things, then that Spirit, the voice of God, is going to be drowned out by things of this world and things of our flesh. And that's not what we want. I'm getting all of my needs met by Jesus. So even if it seems unlikely or it seems that it can't be done, it says, I am getting all of my needs met by Jesus. So even though it might not be here yet, it's on the way. Because what? I am getting all my needs met. 
I'm casting all of my cares on Jesus. That means all of my problems, my anxieties, and my worries. I'm casting them all on him. I'm giving them to him so that I can be free and I can be at peace. I'm doing all things through Christ who gives me strength. We can't rely on our own strength to do things because we get frustrated with ourselves and then things won't really get done. But we can do all things through him because our strength comes from him. Like, oh, y'all, these are so great. And I just really want everybody to rehearse, like, rehearse them, internalize them. Really just get them into your heart, into your mind. So that way is when things of this world try to tell you what you can't do or what you aren't, you can be like, oh, no, 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 I am. Okay? Because that is what Jesus, this is what Jesus thinks of you. This is how Jesus views you. And this is how he wants you to think of you and how he wants you to view yourself. And if you can get that down, then maybe you can conquer the world. Okay? Damn it. I am blessed coming in and I am blessed going out. How many of y'all know that we are blessed to be a blessing to others? So when God blesses us, it's not necessarily so that we can be like, oh, look at all this stuff that I have. Ah, ah. No, he blessed you so that you can help somebody else that is in need. And the more that you give, the more that you receive. Boy, I am on a roll today, y'all. <laughs> I am healed by his stripes. Jesus is a miracle worker. He gave sight to the blind and he raised the dead and brought them back to life. Like Lazarus, y'all, he was dead. The little girl, she was dead and she was brought back to life. The woman with the issue of blood, healed just by his by touching him. You are healed by his stripes. You have to claim your healing. You have to believe in your healing and pray for that healing, you know? No matter what science says, no matter what doctors may say, I know who my God is, is what you should be saying. And if he can deliver people and raise the dead and bring them back to life, he can heal you. I think it starts with your belief. So where is it? This is what was talked about at church on Sunday. Even if he doesn't, he's still God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into the fiery furnace. And they said, even if he doesn't deliver us, we still won't bow. So, I mean, you have to have faith to believe, but faith that believes even if he doesn't. Here's a snippet from my church's pastor on even if type of faith. Can I just talk about for a second the type of faith that does not just believe that God can, but the type of faith that will believe even if God doesn't, that even if the job doesn't turn around, even if the money doesn't come through, even if the healing doesn't happen the way I want it to happen, even if, even if, even if, even if, I'm, I'm talking even if kind of faith, the kind of faith that says, God, my trust is in you, not just what you do, but my trust is in who you are. I'm talking about us developing and growing some roots that grow deep. I'm talking about you and I not having a faith that is just based on uh, the, the fickle feelings that we have in a given moment. I'm talking about you and I having a faith that's not based on you and I having goosebumps in a moment or how a song moves us at some particular time or if a sermon kind of really made me cry. I'm, I'm talking about a faith that goes far beyond that. I'm talking about a faith that says, God, even though you slay me, I'm going to trust you. The type of faith that says, God, I don't know why all of this is going on in my life right now, but I'm going to trust you no matter what. I'm talking about the type of faith that will carry people through slavery, the type of faith that will carry people through bankruptcy, the type of faith that will carry people through divorce, the type of faith that will carry people through de destruction and devastation, the type of faith that says even though all the world is crumbling around me, God is still on his throne. He is still on my side. He is still good. He is still my father and no weapon formed against me will ever prosper. And even though I want to be healed of this cancer, if this cancer takes me, it can take my body, but it can't take my spirit. I'm talking about the kind of faith that says even if he doesn't, I'm going to trust him. I am an overcomer by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. I am daily overcoming the devil. I am not moved by what I see because I am walking by faith and not by sight. I am exercising my authority over the enemy. I am above only and not beneath. I am more than a conqueror. I am an imitator of Jesus. I am the light of the world. Y'all, that's not even all of it. Like, there's 40. I'm not about to sit here and read all of them to you. If you want them, I can send them to you. We can figure something out. But these are so, so great to live by. These are 
something that everyone should be telling themselves and everyone should be believing. So if you want these, hit me up, I got you. I think it is very important that we remember who we are and whose we are. And if you can get that in your mind and you can get that in your heart, nobody, absolutely nobody can tell you differently. Back in September, I had a cousin come down from LA and she was riding with me in the car and she was asking me like about if I still had all the positive sayings and stuff all over my room. And I was like, yeah, I just love, like, I love positivity. I love words and it just helps me to have like a good day. And she's like, yeah, it's a good thing like to have. We were listening to, I got that actually by Anthony Brown. She was like, man, I really like this song. Like, it just makes me want to like have a good day and just I feel like I can do anything. That was just an instance where she was like, the music that I was listening to made her feel good. Like it made her want to have a good day, a good week. And she's like, I need to like, this is something that I want to listen to like before I go to work. So like I helped her get some like feel good music on her phone so that she would have that when she went back to California. Now, here recently I had my cousin and he was riding with me and we were listening to just a lot of, I have like, I just play like a lot of feel good music when I'm in my car, like it's nothing else but feel good stuff. And so he was saying, he was like, man, little cuz, you got some fire music. Like I'm taking all this stuff down so that way when I get back home, I can listen to him. He was like, I just know that if I was listening to anything else, like trapping music and stuff like that, it would make me want to revert back to that lifestyle. Did, did y'all hear me? He said that if he was listening to trap music, it would make him want to revert back to that lifestyle. What you put in, and this is what I told him, what you put in to your spirit is what will come out. You have to, you have to be so, so mindful and so, so cautious of the things that you are allowing around you and into your environment. Because if you are not careful, then it may have you doing things that you necessarily might not want to do. But because your spirit isn't being fed with the things that it needs to be fed with, then your flesh is weak and it's going to do whatever it wants to do and your spirit is always going to lose. Galatians 5.16 says, But I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Now, you might be like, well, how do I walk by the spirit? <laughs> okay, let me break it down for you. When I went to Houston for my birthday, Pastor Jeremy Foster mentioned that we are what we eat. And that is situationally, that is practically, that is in the conversations we're indulging in, the people that we are following and things that we are following on social media, the people that we are hanging around, the things that we are listening to, the TV shows that we are watching, the movies that we are watching, all of that plays a part into what you're feeding your spirit. So, if I am listening to nothing but Trey songs, Yikes, okay? If I'm, like, I don't got nothing against Trey songs, but he only makes one kind of music. And if that is not the kind of lifestyle that you are trying to live, then maybe you should lessen the intake of that kind of music. You feel me? Like, I personally, everybody's triggers are going to be different, so you're going to have to learn what your triggers are, so that way you can deny that, and you can do less of whatever it is that triggers you to want to do what your flesh wants and not what the spirit wants. So I personally know I'm not trying to have no little babies until I am married. Therefore, Trey Songs is not somebody that I personally need to be listening to. Granted, it is very, very rare if I listen to him. His music, I just know, is not something that I can afford in my spirit. I had to stop watching Shameless. The lifestyle that Fiona was living, I was like, ooh, sis, like, you know, that's a little bit much for me, okay? Like, the show, it was, it was a decent show, but I just know that the things that I allow in, and if you allow too much of it in, then it starts to take over your spirit, and then it gets inside of your heart. And if you think, if it's in your heart, then you begin to think on it. And once you begin to think on it, it then becomes an action. It's not too long after that it becomes an action. If I was not mindful of how much shameless that I was watching, then too much of that could have gotten into my spirit, into my heart, and into my mind, and then I would have acted upon something that I was not trying to do. You feel me? So I just cut that show out completely. I was like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Y'all are not about to put these thoughts into my head because that's not the kind of lifestyle that I'm trying to live. And Proverbs 4.23 says, guard your heart for all that you do flows from it. We have to be so, so careful with the people that we hang around, 
the stuff that we allow into our space. Like, it is okay to disconnect from some people and some things if they are not benefiting you and your walk um, with Christ and how you're trying to live your life. Like, you can love people from a distance if you need to. They're just going to have to be understanding if you don't go that way anymore. Back when I was at the Together 2018 event a couple weeks ago, one of the speakers, something that they said stuck with me, and that was, when you follow Christ, you have to unfollow some other things. So that means you might have to unfollow some of that music. You might have to unfollow some of those friends. You might have to unfollow some of those TV shows. You might have to unfollow some of those movies. In order to walk like Christ and to live like Christ did as best as we can, we have to be so, so mindful of what we let into our hearts and what we let into our spirit because we're in a battle with our flesh and our spirit. And because this world is sin, filled like it does not make it any easier for us we have to constantly deny 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 our flesh and the more that we deny our flesh the more that we deny our cravings for things that aren't maybe not necessarily so good for us then the easier it is for our spirit to win the battle so pastor jay talked about cravings he said that you crave what you're used to not necessarily what's good for you you might need to deny that craving and replace it with something more sustainable and beneficial to you and your walk and becoming a better you overall. As what comes out of the mouth gets started in the heart. So another thing with me, music. I love me some Cardi B. I love her and I love her music. But I have realized that some of her music I can't listen to anymore. Like Bodak Yellow used to be my jam. I'm sure every girl could be like, they was in the club, like all this stuff, like rapping, like, yeah, look, I don't, uh, uh, yeah, red bottoms, these expensive, these is bloody shoes. But now if I put my music on shuffle and that comes on, I cannot listen to it because I've realized that my spirit is becoming more sensitive to things of that nature. And if I don't want to say curse words, I don't want those kind of things coming out of my mouth, then I have to be mindful of what it is that I am listening to. If there are curse words every other stanza or every other lyric in a song, then that's probably not the kind of music that I'm listening to and I'm not going to be listening to just because I don't want that coming out of my mouth. And if we're not careful, it'll get into our heart and then it comes next thing is for it to come out of your mouth. Am I right? Am I right? <laughs> okay. If you don't want to curse or say bad words and you're just trying to, you're trying to do better, then maybe you should think about the movie that you may be watching or TV show or songs you're listening to or people that you're hanging around. So if your friends are saying curse words every other sentence or every other word, then you might need to evaluate on how much time you spend with that person because the more you're around them, you start to act like them. I think there's a saying that says the three people that you spend the most time with is who you are most like. Evaluate your life. Evaluate your circle of friends. Who is it that you are spending your, all your time with? Who is it that you are surrounding yourself with? And do you like how they are living their life? Be mind, Just be mindful of that and who you're spending your time with because, you know, you'll start to conform to how they're living and how they're behaving. And if you don't want to live like that, then you might need to distance yourself from certain friendships. Matthew 26 41 says, watch and pray that you do not enter into, that you do not enter into temptation because the spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Bad behavior and blessings do not go hand in hand. Like those cancel each other out. So if you are sowing bad seeds, then you cannot expect something good to come from that. You cannot expect a blessing when you are not doing good things or not sowing good seeds. And Something that we should ask ourselves is, is not, is this a sin, but is this a seed? Like, is this a seed that is going to harvest sin later? Or is this a seed that is going to harvest blessings for me later? We are in a battle with our flesh and our spirit. So if we are not denying our flesh of the cravings that they want, that may not be good for us, then we're going to lose that that spirit and flesh battle and we want our spirit to win like that is what we need to be feeding um, and fueling because if we're not then you know we can't expect too much good if we don't pour good things into us then we're gonna run out of gas like we're not gonna be able to keep going you know if I wasn't telling myself positive things if I wasn't reading positive affirmations on my 
doors and on my mirrors and my bathrooms and of my bedroom dresser, then how do I, how can I think those things, you know? If I'm not feeding myself positivity and there's so much negativity in this world, you have to stay like, prayed up and you have to stay encouraged. And sometimes your encouragement may come through your friends, your family, your church. But most importantly, that encouragement needs to start within yourself. You have to be your own best friend. You have to be your own hype man. Like, cheer yourself on. Have pep talks. Be like, yeah, girl, you got this. Like, y'all, I hate running. I absolutely hate it. My asthma get to acting up. <laughs> or maybe I'm just out of shape. But <laughs> we're going to go with the ladder. <laughs> In doing a mile, I'm encouraging myself. I'm like, yeah, Alex, okay, you got this. You're halfway there. You're almost done. You have to hype yourself up to do whatever it is that you have set your mind to. I want everyone to do their best to live their best life and to be happy, you know, to be encouraged, to be uplifted. I realize that I love um, music that is uplifting and encouraging because it is full of affirmations. I have Bible verses and stuff like that all over my room because they are, the Bible is full of affirmations. Like, if you indulge yourself in what God is saying about you and you internalize it and you really believe it, nothing, absolutely nothing that anyone tells you that goes against what God tells you about you through his word can stand. If you're trying to make positive changes in your life, you need to be mindful of the things that you're listening to. Be mindful of the people that you are hanging around. Be mindful of the environments that you are allowing yourself to go to. Be mindful of the things that you are watching on TV. And be mindful of the people and accounts that you are following on social media. We want to bear good fruit. We don't want to bear bad fruit. We don't want to contaminate those around us. We want to be a light to those around us. So in order for us to be a light, we have to make sure that we're filling ourselves and our spirit with the right kind of things. If you need new music to listen to, I got you. It makes my heart happy to see my music choices rubbing off on those around me. Because when I hear my brother waking up in the morning and he's listening to Andy Minio and not Meek Mill, that is a win for me. Like, yes, I'm rubbing off on you and you are listening to things that are gonna fill, fill your spirit with what you need to hear and um, to be encouraged. And I'm not saying that you should just get rid of all of your secular music. I think that you should start your day off with about 10 or 15 minutes of feel good music. Like, I have gospel music that doesn't even sound like typical gospel music. It's not like the 10, 15 minute long praise and worship music. It's pop, it is like sounding like R&B, it's hip hop, it's rap. If you follow me on Apple Music, I think it tells you what people are listening to. I don't really know how you should search for me. I think you just type my name in, Lexi Wesley, or I don't know. But my playlists are on Apple Music. I can send you some songs if you text me. Like, y'all, I dare you, I dare you, if you're bold, listen to feel good music or listen to one of my playlists just that for a week straight like nothing else but feel good songs for a week straight and tell me how your week was tell me how your day went you know if you're really bold you do it for a month but you know hey <laughs> that's if you're really bold but i do dare you to try it for at least a week and just tell me how it goes and i just want everyone to feel how i feel so i'm going to do my best to make these videos as engaging and encouraging and uplifting as possible because what he's doing in my life I hope and pray that he will do in yours too and I know that he can and he will you just have to believe him for it but that is all that I have for you guys today thank you for tuning in again to all your friends to all your family members so your mama your daddy your auntie your cousins your granny you know tell them all uh, show them my channel let me know what you think take pictures tuning in and send them to me spread the word you know I just hope that with each and every video and blog and post that I make that someone somewhere is touched and that you can take away something that I said and apply it to your life. And I'm praying for y'all. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This is just the beginning. Hashtag Lexi Live. <laughs>